Oh, man. I feel caught off guard. We're never up here this early in the night. <laughs> if you're visiting, worship usually goes an hour, an hour and 15. So we have a unique night tonight, so <clears throat> you're welcome. <laughs> oh, so good. I just was telling the team uh, in the back room even before service started, I always, I always feel like uh, waiting on the Lord is a good idea, but I just feel a special grace. So just the last uh, few days, I just felt a special grace waiting on the Lord. Just put your hands out. Just open your heart. Let's just, let's just wait on the Lord for a moment. Wow. I just, just forewarn you. Could be dangerous. <laughs> uh, because my Bible <clears throat> tells me that He wants to fill you with all of His fullness. Ephesians 3:20. And I don't know about you, but I believe we serve a big God. So come, God. Come, come on. Let's be hungry for real. Come, God. We just say come and crash in. We just say fill this place with your love, God. Fill this place with your presence. Fill this place with your goodness. Fill this place with your miraculous grace, Father. We thank you for your presence, your anointing, your authority, and your goodness. In Jesus' name, we thank you for canceling diseases right now in Jesus' name. Well, wow. if, you, if you haven't heard the good news, people have been healed just walking in the door here. If you haven't heard the good news, people have been healed just getting out of their car in the parking lot here. If you haven't heard, people on the verge of divorce have been reconciled and restored just walking in the door. No one spoke to them. The goodness of God leads people to repentance. It's his kindness. People encounter the love of God on the verge of divorce, encounter the love of God. Repentance rises up in their heart. Reconciliation happens and restoration in that moment. Thank you, Jesus. What if he does more? Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> oh. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> if if people who walked in the building tonight with terminal conditions leave without that condition. People who came in with arthritis leave without arthritis. Heart, actually, as I said, I heard, the, I heard heart murmurs. Well, Father, we cancel that in Jesus' name. There's, is, that, is that apply to someone in the room? You? Uh, anyone else or someone you're very close to, maybe you've even been contending for right now, even if you're standing in proxy for someone, just put your hand on your heart right now. Anyone else? Father, just, I have, yeah, I see you. Just put your hand on your heart. Father, we do thank you for grace right now, and we thank you for canceling heart murmurs in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you that in its place you're releasing heart alignment. So we speak to those hearts and we say, be in alignment with the kingdom of heaven. You, we remind you that you were created in the image of God, in Jesus' name. And we say, line up, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. On that note, Jason, are you, are you, yeah, come up here. I heard this testimony earlier and I was like, you know what, some good news tonight just feels like a good idea. Anybody have an appetite for good news? All right. Something cool happened at work recently. Why don't you uh, give us the short version of what happened? It, it was pretty rad. Um, this week, we, uh, we expanded, and we, we got in a, a corner office. And I thought, oh, cool, I have a corner office. And Jesus said, that's my office. So on, on, on Monday, we set it up. And on Tuesday, I had to push this like TV up against the wall and it, it, we didn't have the right tools. So I just said, everybody just come inside. We're going to, we're, we're just going to soak in the presence of God. And, uh, and we just sat there 
and we turned on some worship music, and we just worshiped. And the presence of God just filled that place. And, and we had two guys that weren't in, that were in our crew that didn't come in quite yet. One of them I didn't think was walking with the Lord. He's about 60 years old. He's a very older, kind of harder man. And, uh, and I was worried if he walked in what he would think. And uh, I sat there, and we're worshiping. And all of a sudden, I see in the corner of my eye, he's coming in. And I just kept worshiping, and we all just kept worshiping. And I looked up about five minutes later, and he's just getting wrecked in the presence of God. Just getting absolutely demolished in the presence of God. We're done after, I think it was like two hours. I, I think that's how long we were there. And, and he comes up to me and he says, I needed that so much. He told me later, he, he hadn't been walking with the Lord till he was about 17. The, the next day, we, we said, let's try this again. And, uh, and I think it, it almost lasted four hours the next day. And, uh, and, and we had uh, Shell pray for him. She had no idea. She wasn't there the day before. And the guy had had gout on his feet so bad. We told him not to show up last week, the week before. We said, don't show up. You can't even walk. Like, this is not, this is not funny. Like, don't, don't even come to work. Just lay, lay down and rest. We prayed for him a bunch and nothing. And um, Shell came and put, it, put her hands on him and, and prayed for him. And he walked without any limp whatsoever. <laughs> It's pretty cool. So that was pretty rad. And we also had, uh, on my, my, we, we've been working on, on my friend here. Uh, he got filled with the Holy Ghost the next, that same night. So there's that. Stay right there. I'm not supposed to be taking time to do this, this service, but I don't care. Let's do it anyway, because God is moving in the room. Listen, if uh, he mentioned gout, I mentioned arthritis. If you got anyone has joint issues, pain, mobility issues, I want you to stand up right now. <clears throat> um, vertebrae issues, also feeling something in the lower intestine. Uh, just stand up right now. Uh, the, the neck, any restricted movement in the neck, uh, carpal tunnel, any of that stuff, stand up. <clears throat> arthritis. Thank you, Jesus, that your grace is here right now. Thank you, Father, for your authority over tinnitus, Father, in Jesus' name. And listen, if you just feel the grace of God on you this moment for your condition, even if we didn't call it out, just stand up anyway. We called out terminal, uh, people coming in with terminal things and leaving without them, chronic things. I'm just going to have Jason pray 10 seconds over us. And Jesus doesn't need more than that, does he? In fact, he's probably started it in many people already. Father, thank you for touching tailbones in Jesus' name. Whoa, thank you for touching. <laughs> I better give him the mic because it's starting already. I can feel it. Here, pray, pray. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, release your goodness over this room right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, release your goodness right now in Jesus' name over everyone here. And I just heard the Lord say, compromised immune systems can exist in the presence of God. Ooh. So good. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, check your body. Check your body. Bend, twist, move, jump up and down. Pick your neighbor up over your head. I don't know. L listen, we prayed by faith. I want you to check your body. Like, move, move. Move, bend, do something right now. A bunch of people are sitting down. Are you done? Are you done? St stand up. Check your body. Check your body. <clears throat> Listen, we just prayed a 10-second prayer. And I, and I love, I love the, the test. I didn't, I didn't hear the whole. Someone else shared the testimony. I didn't know that his testimony started with waiting on God. <laughs> For two hours. <laughs> and then four hours. Stay standing. We're almost done. But listen, I want you, we prayed by faith. I want you to check your body by faith. We prayed 10 seconds, but what God starts, he likes to finish. And listen, even 2% is a testimony. 
And what we give th God thanks for, it increases. So when you go, wow, there, there, there is some change there. Something's happening. That is called praise. And God fills our praise. It gives him room to work with. So how many people would say even in that moment, God brought some measure of breakthrough to your body? Just put your hand up and just wave at us. Put it up and just wave. Listen, listen, family, this is not the time to go to sleep. People are saying miracles are happening in their bodies. Come on, keep waving. Keep waving. If God's touching your body, keep waving like this. And I want you to look around. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give Jesus a big shout of praise in this place. All right, now you can be seated. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on. Listen, when God does miracles, it's not the time for a golf clap. I don't know. I, I, you know, I think that that's like 101. Thankfulness. When God does miracles, it's not time for a golf clap. That's the time to give God exuberant, over-the-top, out-of-the-box praise from deep in our heart that Jesus, that God is showing up in the same room that we are in. Can we try it one more time? Can we just give God praise in this place for who he is and what he's doing in our midst in Jesus' name? Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Awesome. All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. One more announcement I'm supposed to make. Um, we, we, uh, you guys know that we're moving into a new building, and uh, that's very, very exciting. Uh, we'll have pictures up real soon. Probably next week, uh, they have the framing up and the building drywalls going up. It's looking awesome. We're very excited about the, what the finished product is going to be. Um, you know how construction stuff goes. We don't have an exact move-in uh, date yet, but as it gets closer, they'll be able to give us a very a, a more concise move-in date. But we should be uh, functioning in the in the building in August sometime um, for for this for our Saturday night family. And so what I want to let you know is pretty soon we're going to start uh, advertising, letting, letting uh, the world know that we've got a new building and that services are going to be happening. And part of moving into the new building is we're going to have the ability to add Sunday morning service. So we're going to keep Saturday night. We're just going to go after revival. It's going to get even more crazy. We're just going to stay till midnight, whatever, right? We're just going to go after God. We're also going to add Sunday mornings, which is very exciting, but... We don't, we, we want, as a family, we want some warm-up time in the building. You know, whole, whole brand new building. Everything is new. Light switch, sound system, plumbing, you name it. So when you start seeing advertising about, you know, Bethel Austin, new building coming October, don't go, wait, October? I thought we were getting in in August. That is for the public. Right? So we're going to invite the world to come to a grand opening, uh, organize a conference, all that. But we're going to start earlier than that just with our Saturday nights with our family. Because if the light switches don't work, you're going to give us grace. <laughs> right? Amen. All right. <clears throat> but we, we're going to work out the kinks. We're going to meet on Saturday. And then we're going we're gonna to take it to another level uh, around October. So more details will be coming. All right. It is uh, serving and membership month. Why? Because we're growing. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, you know, we are, we are getting established. We are uh, got our feet under us. We are running. We're moving into a new building. We're going to move into a second service. All of that stuff is happening. We're, we, are, we are growing the foundation of our, of our community and our structure and who we are and what we're doing. Anybody, anybody else love growth in the kingdom? And, uh, and so it's, uh, it's membership month. All month we've been talking about serving. Obviously, we're going from one service to two services, and that requires some practical needs. And, and uh, we're moving to this building, and we've had um, yeah, this, this membership uh, launch that's happening. It was actually planned to launch a year ago, and 
uh, right as COVID hit. And so that kind of threw things off a little bit. But we've been talking about it all month, and tonight we are having um, the first official opportunity for people outside of our immediate leadership team to sign up who want to who want to do that, but also to find out more. So I'm going to be talking about it tonight. We're going to end service a little bit early tonight, and we're going to have a question and answer time after. So you can stay in the sanctuary, and, and uh, Renee and I will be up here, and you can ask questions. And then we're after that, we're going to have our leadership team spread out at tables uh, around the, the lobby and in the community room. You can go up to them and ask questions. Uh, but you also, uh, the link, um, there's QR codes out there. The link is going out in the email. So people who want to can start signing up for that. But I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. So when I talk about it, it's a bit of a different uh, service tonight. That's what we're going to do. But it's all kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we are, as I talked about growing and developing, we are, we are growing both in the, in the physical, but we're growing in the spirit. And we're positioning ourselves for spiritual increase. And the testimonies are growing. The number of people getting healed and saved and delivered and set free is growing all the time. The number of people getting empowered and trained and equipped and released is growing all the time. And so we're moving into this this membership launch. But there's a couple of things that I want to talk about in relation to that because I think it's just important for some foundation and to hear to hear from our hearts on on some of this stuff. And and uh, yes, we're we're launching a membership program, but uh, it's not it. Our heart isn't legalism. The agreement isn't around legalism. The, 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 the spirit behind it is heart agreement. And, uh, you know, just agree, the ability to agree on some, some core values and some things that make us tick and some things that we, uh, that we believe are foundational to the Christian walk, things that we're going after as a house. And how many people know that, that in the kingdom there's power in agreement? There's power in agreement and there's power in unity. And I'm going to break down several things and talk about uh, some dynamics, um, uh, why we're doing what we're doing, some questions that people might have. But I want to start with the power of agreement. And in Matthew chapter 18, if you've got a Bible, you should have a Bible. If you've got a Bible, you can open your Bible to Matthew chapter 18. The power of agreement. And then we're going to jump into Psalms 133 after that. Someone's excited already. Someone knows their Bible. Come on. The power of agreement. In Matthew 18, verses 18 through 20, it says this, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Powerful. The, the power of agreement. <laughs> that, that if any two agree on something, it will be done. How many people like, like the language that we have the ability to loose on earth what's loosed in heaven? Yeah. That we have the ability to bind on earth what is bound in heaven. But part of releasing that authority is agreement. Yeah. It says right here, two, whatever two agree on it will be done. Meaning what you bind, it will be bound. And what you loose, it will be loosed. How many people can envision an environment? Look, we saw just a taste of it a moment ago. Ten seconds and miracles started to break out all through the room. Why? Because there's an abiding presence of one who is greater than we are in our midst. I'm just going to take a happy break on that thought. <laughs> The, the power of agreement. How many people can envision an environment that only allows in it what heaven allows? 
And how many people can imagine an environment that keeps out of it what heaven doesn't allow? There's an environment that's starting to happen. That's why people can step out of their car and get healed in the parking lot. Because there's an environment being established that says, you know what? That's not allowed in heaven. So it's bound here. But part of releasing that is agreement. What we come together in agreement on. We're two agree. But what happens if three agree? If one sends a thousand to flight, two ten thousand. What happened if ten agree? What about fifty? What happens if 500 people come together in agreement and say, we're releasing only what heaven released and we bind when only heaven, when heaven is already bound. Thank you, Jesus. The power of agreement. Psalms 133. I've read this psalm so many times recently. There's something on this. It's a very popular psalm. Many of you heard it. I'm going to read the entire psalm, but don't get too nervous. There's only three verses. Okay, here we go. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garment. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Now listen, it's such a beautiful imagery. Unity releases the oil of heaven that runs forth, that runs down. But listen here, it's, it, it ends with, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Do you realize that unity isn't just like we come together in harmony on a song? <laughs> unity isn't just we can agree on a couple of ideas together. Kingdom unity, biblical unity, actually invites and releases the commanded blessing of the Lord. Do you know that word command right there it is to lay charge upon? What, what happens when the blessing of the Lord... By his decree is charges laid upon an environment. It means to give charge. It means to command or it means to order. When God orders his blessing, environments change. People take notice. Cities begin to be transformed. The kingdom is released and revival is at hand. We are, we, are, we are rolling out a program of uh, relational equity. It, it's, it's, it's not legalism. The difference is the hard agreement, as I mentioned already. And here's some, here's some things, some differences. And as we roll this out, we're creating a place for people who want to engage deeper and, and, and have that sense of belonging deeper, a place for that to happen. But what you're not going to experience is an us and them. You're not, you're not going to experience, oh, you're in or you're out. This is, this is an opportunity for those who know they're at the place where they want that level of engagement. But it's not a, oh, you're, you're in or you're out or I can't believe you're not in. Like you're not, there's going to be none of that. It's like this is available if this is where you're at in the place of the relationship. And I mentioned this uh, the other week. But in relationships, courting is a healthy place. Like, you notice we don't usually do arranged marriages here. <laughs> but there's, there's a healthy dynamic to courting, meaning I, I am interested in you. We're interested in each other. Is this meant to be long term? Courting. But how many people know courting isn't just meant to last forever? Because there's a greater level of benefit ahead and blessing. Is this landing on deaf ears? Is this making sense? There's, there's, there's more available. Here, something I love. This, it's not legalism. I love this point. Listen, we don't, we don't need anything from you. 
You're not like signing up for a membership of like, you know, we need your credit card number and like, you know, there's monthly dues and like the first month is free, but then it's $19.99 after that. Like, no, listen, we actually don't need anything from you. We're making an agreement together. But but you're but some people are like, well, wait a minute. It, on there, it has a list of requirements. Here's things that you need from us. But listen, I would say to you that those aren't needs because of membership. Those are needs because you're a Christian. Those are we're just agreeing on what our core values actually are. Listen, <laughs> I get myself in hot water, but I don't care. <laughs> I kind of live there. Listen, <clears throat> I don't. I don't want you to tithe because you're a member. I want you to tithe because you're a believer. And I don't, listen, I, it, listen, I believe in tithing. And I have a whole message that I'm trying to get in at some point in this season on that. Listen, I believe that tithing belongs to your home church. So if this isn't your home church, I don't want your tithe. Listen, it's not a money thing. It's a heart thing. How many people know that Jesus doesn't want your 10%? He wants your everything. I'm going to get on to that message. I can't. I don't got time for that. <laughs> listen, listen, I don't, I don't want you to pursue purity in marriage because you're a member. I want you to pursue purity in marriage because it's God's best for you. And so we're not, there's no, there's no, there's, we don't need anything from you, but we are coming into agreement on some core values of what it is to walk this walk and to run this race together. And what, what happens is it increases the ability for the commanded blessing. I'm going to talk more about that because, listen, there's, look, courting is healthy. And, listen, I don't, I don't need you to be a member. I know I'm selling it real strong. <laughs> I don't need you to be a member. You can, you can come to this church. You can benefit. You can be involved. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do. You can classes. You can totally engage, and no one's going to be asking you up and down, like, hey, are you a member? Are you a member? Are you? Like, no, that's, that's not going to happen. But for the, the people who are at that place where they're looking for that deeper level of connection and belonging, there's, we're creating a place where that's available. We're not asking you to do anything other than what we believe God is asking all followers to do. <clears throat> this is not this is not legalism. The question always is, are we free from the law? And the, and in Jesus, anyone thank you thankful for Jesus? <laughs> like like we, what Jesus did for us is that He freed us from the judgment of the law. But how many people know that he didn't remove the high, the high value or the standard of the law? <laughs> that response was quieter than the first one. <laughs> how many people know that that's true? In, Ma in Matthew 5, <clears throat> Jesus says in verse 17, Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. And he goes, into, uh, he goes into all these examples. He says, you have heard it said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. What, what, what did Jesus just do? He raised the bar. That... Jesus didn't do away with the law. He wrote the law in our heart. What he did away with was the gavel. He, did, he removed it out of judgment, and he brought it into relationship. And, and the law was, was pass or fail. The law was right or wrong. The law is either you, you did it or you didn't do it. There wasn't, there wasn't grace for in between. Grace came through uh, the sacrifice of animals for, part -time, for temporary. Listen, he removed the judgment of, did I get it right or wrong? He put it in a heart condition. I want to speak heart to heart. 
Do you love me? Will you follow me? And when we find ourselves in the full yes, the lower standard of the law is fulfilled. People ask, again, this is another myth. People ask, again, about tithing and, and well, has tithing been done away with? Well, listen, you're not held to the judgment of the law. But in every other example, Jesus raised the standard. So people are like, well, is it about tithing or is it about living generous? And I'm like, I don't know. If, if your generosity is more than 10%, you're probably good. That was a good point. <laughs> same, same examples of, of purity and adultery. Jesus says if you've even looked upon a woman with lust in your eye, you're, you're guilty of adultery. So he raised the standard. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. But he did it out of relationship. Is this okay? Hmm. Something else I'll... I love about what we're, listen, it's, you know it's not legalism because there's no, there's no judgment or punishment. In, you can be a member or you can not be a member. You can date, you can court, you can jump in, head over heels. There's no judgment and there's no punishment. Another thing that I love is that there's an, it's easy to get in, in the sense of like we are asking people to line up with our core values and purity and take elements class and all that. But you don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops. But also, there's a clear and easy way to step out. How many people know that when, <clears throat> that there's all ty different types of uh, agreement and covenants in the Bible? And that when we hear the word covenant, sometimes we, we marriage is the most prominent example of covenant that we're, that we're aware of in the West, and marriage is supposed to be for life. But covenant also is an agreement of terms, and it can, it can be short-term, it can be long-term, it can be for life, but listen, people sometimes get scared, like, oh, if I sign up for membership, I'm signing up for life. <laughs> no, listen, in, in the kingdom, there's healthy growth, there's healthy there's healthy pruning, there's healthy coming, and there's healthy going. And listen, if you, if, if you sign up as a member, and then in a couple of years God moves you on, you get a, you get a job elsewhere, awesome. Be blessed. We're going to pray for you. We're going to send you out. We're going to celebrate your promotion. We're happy for you. Listen, even if, even if you're, not, you, you're like, I'm coming into agreement with this house. I love what they're doing, and then a couple years go on, and you go, you know what? I think I have a different set of values in some areas. That's okay, too. No one's going to be upset with that. But here's what we are asking in a, in a relational agreement. Is we ask that, you, that people don't just take off and disappear. What does healthy relationship look like? It just means, hey, if I have an issue, that means I go to you and I talk about it. Something I don't understand, like, hey, let's talk about it. I don't just take my chips and go home. Yeah. Right? And, and we're, we're not throwing accusation. We're, not, we're just agreeing. Look, we're going to do this in a healthy way. And so we talk about it, and if we, if we agree to disagree, like, oh, we, we look at these things different ways, and you feel more comfortable over here, awesome. That's not a problem, because that church over there is also part of the kingdom. And we, we love that. Membership in no way replaces your relationship with Jesus. <laughs> Some of this stuff is funny. But <laughs> it's, it's, in no way replaces your relationship with Jesus. But the Bible tells us there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. And the kingdom is family. So if you're not pursue, pursuing 
mul a multitude of counselors and community, then are you following your Lord? Thank you. Thank you. One person. <laughs> I can work with that. <laughs> Now listen, the, what what does you know community look like? I just pause. If you've been with us a while, you would have heard me say this many times. I don't I don't believe that any uh, by God's design. This is this is me. This is my personal. By God's design, I don't think He gives any one person or any one house the full nature and manifestation of God, because He designs us to need each other. That's why there's many gifts but one spirit. That, that he designs us that all, only all together do we become the full expression of Christ. And I believe that for individuals, but I also believe that for churches. And I believe that we are, each church is a puzzle piece that's supposed to make the picture. The tapestry and when I was much younger, I, I didn't understand, you know, why one house would go after different things or have a different value for things. And I'm like, everyone should be going. But that's how we are. If we get a nugget of truth, we're like, why isn't everyone doing this one thing? Because God spoke to me. <laughs> but God will speak to me because I'm supposed to represent that piece. And God speaks something different to someone else because they're supposed to represent that piece. And he gives a different revelation to someone else because they're supposed to represent that piece. And all of them are kingdom, and all together we are the full representation of Christ. So we celebrate what God does in all of his, all of his houses where Jesus is Lord and Savior. We mentioned creating an opportunity for people who are at that place of looking for a deeper connection and, and deeper covering. And there is, a, there is a level of blessing that happens in unity and agreement and covenant that blessing is extended. So that doesn't mean that you're not blessed if you're not, if you don't, if you're not in membership, but there is a thing where we come together and lock arms at a greater level that God can release even greater blessing. There's also a dynamic of, of helping the church identify who's, who's building with us. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of people have a questions of like, you know, is this, is this necessary at the individual? Is this necessary for me? Like, I'm, I'm here, I'm all in, I'm engaged, and I, I would say to you, that's awesome. And this might, may not be necessary for you. But the question is, is it good for us as a house? And part of that dynamic is for us to know who is running with us, who's building with us. And the, the deepest level of, of kingdom is in relationship. We already know that. We said that. And I pray that everyone who is a part of this house is known deeply by someone or some communities. But statistically, people can only really know, you know, deep groups, uh, you know, upwards, 70 is maxing out of like, I know your history. I, I, I know how your family's doing. I know your past. I have a sense of, you know, where your marriage is, purity, all that type. And that's, that's a really big estimate. So what does that mean? That, that means that I hope everyone is known by someone in leadership. That's why we have small groups, and that's why we have serving teams. That's why we have dinner for eight groups, and all of that, all of those things happen. But on, when you step back up here... And it's like, how do we know everyone who wants to be in at that level? And it helps us know where, where we can extend weight, where we can, where we can lean on, and who's with us, who's, who's ready to uh, be elevated to, to next levels of, you know, leading this or that. And again, courting is, is healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. 
it also helps us as a church keep, keep our transparency. How many people think that's important as a church, as a rep- representative of Christ? And what do I mean by it helps us keep our transparency? I mean that things like, uh, you know, annual business meetings and talking finances and salaries and how much money is going to missions and this and that. Listen, the, to, know, to know who is with you in agreement to share sensitive information with, how many people know that helps? It helps to know who's with you at that level. And, that, and then, I mean, I'll just let you in on a little pastoral secret. There will be people who are around for quite some time before you find out eventually that they don't quite agree with everything that you agree with. I mean, it's, you'd be surprised, <laughs> the stories, the things that happen, you know. You got someone who's been around for a while, and, you know, they're like, you're like oh, maybe they'd be a great home group leader, and you're, not, you're about to promote them, and then you find out, like, oh, wait, wait, what? You're, you think a little bit of, of, of white witchcraft is a good thing? Wait, wait a minute, time out. <laughs> uh-huh. You would be you'd be surprised. We, we do live in Austin too. Just uh, <laughs> like <laughs> like oh, you've been coming. You've been coming for over a year, and oh, I didn't I didn't know that you were living with your boyfriend and you think it's okay. L- listen, I'm not uh, I'm not I'm thro- throwing. I'm just saying like you'd be surprised at this like what goes on in a community, and it's all good. And listen, can I also say this? We want everyone to feel at home and to feel comfortable here, right? We want, listen, the, the drug addict, and, we, and we've had people dump their drugs right here at the altar. We want, listen, a drug addict, a, a prostitute, it doesn't matter whatever condition, but we want people to feel comfortable walking in the doors. But we also want people to be transformed as they stay. <laughs> it's fun to invite witches to church. <laughs> Why? Because we're not afraid of their inferior power. Uh, listen. Oh, you, what, you've been dabbling with that? Oh, cool. Hey, you want to see some real power? Come with me. We want everyone to feel comfortable. We're going to continue to strive to create an environment where that's the reality. But we also want people to to come as they are, but to leave more like Jesus. And for that transformation to continue to happen over time. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> is is membership a necessity? Probably not. In the sense of can a church function without one? Sure, it probably can. Using this microphone is also not a necessity. It's not a biblical mandate to preach with a microphone. But it does help the message get out further and wider and with more clarity. So it doesn't have to be a biblical mandate to have practical benefits and application. But unity does have biblical mandate. Agreement does have biblical mandate and practical application. Part of what we're going after is the commanded blessing. We're going after the abiding presence of God. And we want everyone, people dabbling in witchcraft, people in the cold, people on the streets, it doesn't matter. People living in, uh, you know, adulterous situations, it doesn't matter. Come in, come in, come in. Feel comfortable. Encounter God. Experience his love. Get changed. We want those people to come in the door. 
But if those people aren't changed, we don't want them leading other people, walking in ways that are not godly or not in alignment with his heart, not in alignment with, with the biblical values, not in alignment with the community values. So there is that level of accountability. And that starts in relationship. But when you have a large growing house, it's also good to know on a corporate level who's with you. Thank you, Jesus. Last, last verse, verses, and then we're going to pray. And then we're going to break, and we're going to have, um, like I said, a time for just some Q&A in the room here. And uh, there, there will be, um, we, had this, we had this design differently, um, and, and we had to, had to make some adjustments. But there are um, little treats, little snack boxes that are available uh, again, there's the QR codes all around. If you want to download a membership, you can do that. If you want to stay for a Q&A time in here, you can do that. And then even after the Q&A time, our leaders are going to be stationed at tables uh, out in the lobby, the community room, wherever. And you can go up and ask, ask any questions, additional questions you have. So all, all of that's going on. But I want to read these last couple verses out of Acts chapter 2. Someone jumped up and got happy on that. Come on. Someone else knows their word. I, I like it when you just mention the verse, the chapter, and someone's already happy. Because they've been in their word and they know where you're going before you get there. Come on, as my brother was up here powerfully transitioning in worship, talking about uh, the day of Pentecost. Anyone thankful for the day of Pentecost? With anyone thankful for the day the Holy Spirit fell in love and power? In grace, in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, when they were all with, somebody say, one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Pause and think yourself commanded blessing. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it Filled the whole house where they were seated, and there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. As the story goes on, from that encounter with the living God, they came out of the upper room, and, and they were so undone in the goodness of God, people are like, are these men drunk? <laughs> and, and Peter said, we're not drunk as you suppose. And, and he, goes on to, he goes on to preach. He, he declares that this is that, because Joel 2, 2 prophesied it, the outpouring of the Spirit. He's like, this is that. It's happening in your midst. And he goes on to share the gospel and jump all the way to verse 40. And with many other words, speaking of Peter, he testified and exhorted them. I'm not the only one that can preach long messages. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this per perverse generation. Then those who gladly received it were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000 souls were added to them. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's, there's power in the ability to say, I know who's with me. 3,000 souls were added to them. How did they know that? Because there was an ability to count who was in, who was with them. And in, in covenant in the Bible, there's always a, an act of commencement, an act of agreement. We're stepping in to agreement here. And in this moment, they were all baptized. But how many people, when you preach to 3,000 uh, unsaved, and they, you, can all, you can invite them all to get water baptized right in the moment? That's, an, that's a great idea. I want to see 3,000 people baptized in one day. That's a life goal of mine right there. And that was only the men, not to mention women and children. But there was, there was an act in that moment of like, of like this, is, this is the message. Are you in? 
And obviously this, this is the highest message. This is salvation. But they were baptized and they were able to be counted. But other agreements have, other covenants have acts of agreement, of commencement as well. And today when you, when you stand up in church, not every person that you speak to is an unbeliever. People have been saved for 30 years, 40 years. People have come from all different states. People have come from, they've already been baptized. People have been members of other churches. People have all these experiences, and they're all coming together through the doors, and you have guests coming. We, we have guests coming every week. We also have people who are with us who live in other states. People who, people who come down uh, every six weeks, because they don't live in Texas, they live in another state, but they're like, we are with you. We can only make it every six weeks because it takes us seven hours to drive to church. Shaka Baba. We have people in, in, in Dallas and Houston who, who are committed, committed to this house, and they, own, they come every other week because they have to drive three hours here and three hours back. Thank you, Jesus. But in that, in that environment, it's a little bit harder to know who's with you. So we're just creating a place for people to say, you know what? I'm with you. And if two years you get a promotion and, uh, or, or circumstance change, life takes you elsewhere, we're going to celebrate that and bless you and, and applaud that. Because there's healthy coming and going in the kingdom. It's an organism. So we're going we're gonna to pray together and ask for an increase of the commanded blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Well, is, a, is somebody available to come on the keys? And we're just going to pray, and we're going to close, and then we're going um, to close this section pretty quickly because we're going to transition into Q&A in here. Uh, children's church still goes till 8.30, so we have a half hour um, to do the Q&A time. But we're gonna, I'm going to ask if after we pray, if you aren't going to stay for the Q&A time, that's great. But just go ahead and take your conversations out into the lobby um, so that we can move pretty quickly straight into the uh, question and answer time. But if you're, if you're interested, listen, it doesn't... <laughs> Cording is healthy. We don't, I don't need you to be a member. But if that's, if that's something that your heart says, this, this is where I belong, and I want that level of connection, it's available. I'm not going to be asking you when I meet you. I'm not going to be asking you. No one's going to be checking IDs at the door. <laughs> I don't actually care that much in that regard. It's like... But I do believe that God is elevating our foundation. He wants to take us higher and farther. If you want to see an increase of the commanded blessing and favor of the Lord, I just want to invite you to stand to your feet tonight. We're going to pray. And again, what does it look like? What does it look like when an environment, oh, I just was reminded again, where, where we started service, waiting on the Lord. Oh. Before I pray, is it okay if we just wait on the Lord again? Just... Whatever year I'm here to receive posture, heart posture looks like. Just, just wait on the Lord. Aren't you glad it's not hard to wait on someone who's already here? <laughs> so biblically speaking, when we say wait on the Lord... It doesn't mean wait for someone who's not here yet. It means take a moment to enjoy the presence of the one who is already here. 
Father, we thank you. We love you. God, our greatest desire is to be undone. To be so yielded that we're radiant. That at just the mention of your name, demons flee. Father, I thank you that in the kingdom you don't have to raise your voice. When you're rooted and grounded in love, in Christ, in faith, you don't have to shout. God, I thank you that we are undone in the love of God. One of the greatest ways to get people delivered is just to give them a hug. Because <laughs> what's in them hates what's in you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Father, we love you. And God, we thank you for the ability just to come into heart agreement, heart alignment. And we're inviting an increase of your decreed blessing, an increase of your presence. Father, we thank you, not just for this house, God, but for all all of your bride across the globe, God. But if you would use us even as a forerunner, God, for this place where we bind what you've bound and we loose what you've loosed, that we only allow in our environment what heaven allows. Wow. And that includes your love, your grace, your miracle hand, your provision. Father, I thank you. That Jason's testimony is just one of a dozen every week because there's people who are learning how to wait on your presence. They receive your blessing. Just put your hand on your heart now. Father, I pray for every person here. I pray that the great increase would come upon us. And Father, I, I thank you that even for those who are visiting, God, the great increase would come upon them and their households and their home churches, God. We thank you that you only desire to take us from glory to glory. So we say, come with your goodness and your presence, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. Come on, you can give the Lord a hand. That's all right. <laughs>